Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're going over a breakdown for Shinobu. And this one has been quite a long one in the making, because Shinobu is quite an interesting character and one that I haven't really stood, understood for a long time, but after playing with her a decent amount online, I think I've finally figured her out. She's kind of strange, because she has really low damage, but her pressure is great, and her movement is really great. But with such low damage, it seems, well, what's the point of moving around if I'm, you know, not going to hurt the opponent at all, at all if I end up hitting them? But that's the interesting thing about Shinobu, she's a very unique character and plays differently. She doesn't play to get big damage, she just plays to... It's, it's weird to say and I'm not sure how to describe it, but all of her strengths combine and work together really well to make up for her weaknesses, which is her damage. So, for example, just to explain, as it, this is a super simple bread and butter combo um, that you just do if the connection's really bad and you just need to do something that'll guarantee a little bit of damage. It's really below average damage. Even if you're including the poison damage, it's really bad. It's below average for two bars. Really not that good. But to make up for her damage, she has really powerful pressure. But as you may have seen, a lot of her pressure is quite expensive. Even just to get this one grab off here, that cost me two bars. And I could have like done it even more if I wanted to, you know, go and do it again and do stuff like that. It costs her a lot of meter to do her pressure. Her pressure is really good, and we'll talk about that later. But it's expensive. But to make up for her pressure being expensive, she gets a lot of situations where she can build a lot of meter. So if I get Sabato to stop locking here, a lot of situations you can choose to end in a way that builds her a lot, 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 lot of meter. So let me just get rid of a bunch of meter. So say for example, I use my awesome air dash and go into a combo like this. I had almost no meter to start this combo, and by the time Sabito's woken up, I've got nearly four bars back. And I think I can get even more meter if I make the combo a little bit different. This may build me even more. So Sabito's standing up. Okay, it's pretty similar. But she's building all that meter from a, co a single combo because she managed to hit the opponent. And the same goes for her regular combos. If I'm really low on meter, I can go for a simple combo like this if I have a support. And with this knockdown, I get to build back almost three bars before the opponent wakes up, or I can keep it super simple, and if I want to do something like... I don't know, say if I've accidentally done a long attack string and I do something like this, I can just stand here, let Nezuko do other things, and I get to build back around four bars of meter. It's ridiculous. So, she builds back a lot of meter if you choose to do it. She can spend a lot of meter on pressure, and her amazing pressure makes up for the lack of damage she gets when she has a combo. And also what makes up for her lack of damage is her awesome mobility, which allows her to avoid taking damage, because she does have relatively low life. So to make up for her low life, she has amazing movement. She's one, the one, probably the best air sidestep in the game. It keeps her in the air for a long time. So unlike a lot of characters, she can actually approach from the air. As you can see here, I was like half the screen away from Sabito, and I'm up on top of him now, doing a full combo that I messed up, but it was <laughs> a full combo. And being able to have this awesome movement is also supported by a tilt special, which has really great tracking and has really good anti-tracking. So because she jumps like a gazelle, or what are the things that jump up hills sideways? Like a, a deer or something? Because she goes side to side, it cancels out a lot of the tracking of other moves, like dash-ins, and it has so much priority. If the opponent is pressing buttons or doing their own dash-in, this move will always win. I'll, I'll sh see if I can show that with Sabito, Let's see if he gets him to do something. Let's see, his run-in gets beat by this, his weapons attacks get beat by this. Um, oop, that beat me. But even a lot of water wheels get beaten by this. It has so much priority. It has to be perfectly timed right before she actually does the attack. Otherwise, she will win most of the time. And she gets a full combo from it. So she has so much movement, so much mobility, and so much offensive mobility. Being able to approach from the sky is really amazing. Because if the opponent, you know, is doing anything on the floor, like a dash in or just regular buttons, you're going to be in the sky, attacking from above and getting a full combo, and she can get some pretty awesome looking combos from the sky. 
And uh, yeah, being able to go from the sky onto the ground, that's just extra movement. Being able to use your um, most amazing special in the sky and it becomes even better. She can combo off of it way more from the air and becomes more advantageous on block. She's just a, a character that excels in movement and oppressive movement. And then when she is in, she has great pressure. And when she gets a combo, it's not too much damage, but because she spent a lot of meter on pressure, you can use your combo to build back meter so you can do more of your pressure and stuff. And she's just a really interesting character. And now that I've rambled a lot for the start of the video, I think we should get into the actual breakdown where we talk about each thing individually. <laughs> so, a regular attack strings. Um, I hate to say it, but they're really bad. They do almost no damage. The down attack string does 1000 damage. The aerial attack string is quite interesting that it leaves her in the air and that can lead to some really handy stuff when we talk about pressure because when she's airborne she doesn't have to dash to get into the air and she's automatically in the air and then she can do the aerial version of her special move which can lead to some interesting stuff. So that's pretty cool but all of her attacks do really low damage and they scale the combo a lot. See just a simple thing like this if I show do a full attack string into my poison with Nezuko that does like 17,000, but if I just do like three hits, that also does 17,000, and it was only three hits and it took way less time. So the more attacks of hers you do in a combo, the way more, way more the combo will be scaled. So with Shinobu, when you're doing your attack strings, you want to make sure you hit confirm as soon as possible. You're like, da -da -da -da. okay, my opponent isn't blocking, let me go into my poison and then bring out a support and actually get a full combo doing, or else I'm just going to get... A really, really low damage combo, like da, da 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 even if you do a few more, you want to just, you just want to do it as quick as possible, like, oh, there we go, okay. Get my full combo, and um, don't screw up the support like I am. <laughs> All the combo? What? Get decent damage and a hard knockdown, then build your meter back, and have time to build most of your support gauge back. See, Nezuko's like past halfway by the time Sabito gets back, so the hard knockdown is really good for that too. But uh, yeah, her regular attack strings, not very good. But on the note of regular attacks, her aerial attack is possibly the best in the game. I'm mi maybe Rui's is a good contender, but I think hers probably takes the cake, especially combined with her amazing aerial dash. It is just one of the most amazing tax attack strings, and I know I mention the aerial attacks in all my breakdown videos, but Shinobu is the one character that I've played where I really, really use it in my gameplay. Like, it's one of the core aspects. Because she has such an awesome aerial dash, a lot of the time I'm aerial dashing, and because I can aerial dash in on the opponent, I can just be floating in in the sky and go for this, and then get a full combo off of it. And screw up my combo, because apparently I like doing that while I record. <laughs> Jeez. And even if you want to keep it a, like a cheap combo, because it's your aerial combo starter, you can just start combos super cheaply, because it's your bouncer. Whoops. <laughs> you could even just do this if you'd like. And uh, yeah, so not only the fact that it, it is really good with her um, dash, what is good about it is it actually hits surprisingly far below her. So like at the peak of her jump is the only time when it misses. So if you press it right at the top of her jump, that's what I'll miss. I'm actually even having a hard time making it miss. But if you do like an instant jump into an attack, that'll hit guaranteed. If you do it a little bit late, that'll hit. You just have to do it right when she's up here. That's the only time when it'll miss. But even up then, as you can see here, if I go sideways, you can see this thing has an awesome hitbox as well. It reaches really far in front of her, so that means it actually ends up being really useful in situations where you don't usually have a counterattack. For example, um, when you're fighting a Rengoku player who loves doing the jump special where he does the massive flame ball landing onto the ground, he jumps into the air on your knockdown, but he tries to jump into the air, but that move has zero aerial hitbox, so you can just jump in the air and anti-air him, and like, even if you're like over here, you're gonna hit him because it's such an awesome hitbox on this, on this attack in the air. And other characters, a lot of the time they jump in air, in the air that you don't really realize because you can't do anything about it, but the more you use this special, this um, regular attack, the more you'll realize how useful it is you can actually anti-air people with this. Like, someone jumps in the air and you just go bop, catch him out of the air and then get a full combo for it, it's, it's really fun. <laughs> um... 
And uh, yeah, it also has a really surprising vertical hitbox because, you know, it reaches surprisingly low before. And even if just one of the hits hit or two of the hits, they don't have to hit all three and she'll get the last hit and get the bounce from it. And even if you don't want to get a combo from the bounce, you can just take the hard knockdown and get a lot of meter back for it. So yeah, really, really awesome aerial attack string. It's probably one of the best things about her, honestly, even though it's a weird thing. And the fact that you can just throw it out, and even if you miss, you're in the air, so no one's really going to punish you for it. And you can always cancel it into this in the air, or just cancel it straight into her dash, which takes you onto the ground and has amazing priority, and will basically cancel out whatever the opponent's doing. Or you can like sidestep out of the way if you really think you are going to get punished, or you can just cancel it into a dive kick. So you've got so many options, I just love to... Like, air dash, pop this thing out, if it hits the opponent, it hits, if it doesn't, or if it did here, but if it doesn't, you know, just cancel it into this and then get your full combo going that way. See, that was pretty juicy damage. Uh, yeah, <laughs> enough rambling about her aerial attack, I just think it's really amazing. Her tilt attack is kind of below average in like distance it doesn't even reach around here like she does this weird roll forwards where it seems like it would hit the opponent but it actually doesn't um where it's really noticeable is the fact that she can't actually connect it off of a blocked aerial attack so even if i do this it'll just never hit on the opponent no matter how close i am oh and it worked there okay sometimes it works but it almost never does and then you're awkwardly just rolling in front of them and they get to punish you um, it's particularly noticeable in stuff like this, where I thought it would be really useful, you know, you do attack into tilt attack, but your tilt attack just doesn't miss, um, doesn't hit, and it misses, and it's very bad. It's not advantageous on block at all, the opponent can match way before you can, it may even be punishable for certain characters with quick attacks, but I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, it's not the greatest, but one upside about it is that, unlike most aerial tilt attacks, it actually starts a combo. So... That makes it a little bit handier than than awful. <laughs> but yeah, it's not too great. It's a dive kick. It's pretty okay. And it starts yellow combos, but it's got bad range. That's basically it. A tilt attack on the ground, on the other hand, is also a really, really good aspect about Shinobu. It's what I would say is the safest armored attack in the entire game. No, no. Due to the fact that even on whiff, like, not only on combo do you get a super easy free combo for it into an aerial attack string, so you have so many opportunities for combos here. Like, you can go for a tilt attack, you can go for your aerial attacks into the pop-up. You have so many options for combos, but even on whiff, this thing is so safe, because you can just cancel it into your attacks in the air. And as you said, when you're doing this stuff, aerial shinobu is scary shinobu. She's in the air, she can go for this, and then if that hits, she can get a full combo. And if she is really far away and she's like, oh crap, why did I even do this over here? You can just cancel this, do a dash in, and your dash in is really amazing. And if it does, if the opponent does block it, you're in, you're in their face. You can do some attacks, go into this special move. There's just so many options for pressure. Like, a lot of characters, if they whiff this, or if they have it blocked, it's, it's just death for them and they kind of die unless they bring out a support. But that costs, you know, support meter. And if you're a demon, you can't do that at all. But Shinobu, she doesn't even need to do that because she can just instantly go into attack strings or instantly cancel into another special move. It is the most awesomely safe thing ever. It does charge up a little bit slowly, but I think it's about average speed to get to full charge. So it's really handy to use after her really awesome grab. She can just do this. And for some reason it actually has really good tracking. I'm not sure how I can show this against the AI. But even if the opponent's walking sideways around you, this special move actually, I mean, this armor attack actually has a pretty good tendency to turn around and track the opponent, where most armor attacks don't do that. Um, yeah, I don't think Sabato's gonna run around behind me, but it can turn around, which is really good. But yeah, the fact that she can just cancel this into anything, tilt attack into tilt attack, tilt attack into aerial attacks, it's just so amazing, so safe. Um, yeah, it's ridiculous how good that is. And it can also be used in combos for her, so if I do something like this, because it's quite fast, I can do a simple combo like this. Which is pretty cool, just to add a little bit of damage in it. And I think the last normal of hers is her grab, which is honestly pretty good. It used to have really dreadful damage, but now it has about average damage. 
fifteen. Yeah, one thousand five, one thousand six hundred. About that's that's pretty average damage. At least it's not the tiny little, teeny piece of damage it used to be. And obviously she has pretty good range. It's not ridiculously fast, but it's got decent range for the speed that it is. It's not a Hinokami or Nezuko grab, but um, but it gets the job done, and it's very important for her pressure. Any of her full attack strings, she can just cancel into a dash, into a grab, and that does a lot of guaranteed damage for her, where she usually can't get guaranteed damage, and she just is really easily able to use it in her mix-ups and pressure. Um, I think that's all of her normals we've mentioned, yeah. So, now her special moves. Her special one is Sixfold Thrust, where she hits you six times with her her sword, and that's about it. It looks like a super simple special move, but it basically does everything you'd want a special move like this to do. It starts combos, it does it's her most damaging special move, it is advantageous on block, it's basically just her like, all around a special move. It can do whatever you want it to do. So I can just do a super simple bread and butter combo with it, use it to extend in here. Doing okay damage in there. If the opponent's blocking, I can use it in my block strings to do a lot of attacks and it's advantageous on block so I can continue attacking with it afterwards. And it's dash cancelable at any point, or cancelable into anything. So I can cancel it into a different special move, or I can cancel into a sidestep, I can cancel into a jump, if I want to get some pressure going that way. And the aerial version is even better. So it's six hits again, it still starts combos, and it's still advantageous on block, but it's better at both of them. It can start even better combos because she can actually get a grab from the aerial version and a grab is the most damage she can get guaranteed in the game. Like doing something simple like that is a big chunk of guaranteed damage for Shinobu. She doesn't get to see damage like that often unless you're doing like a full support combo. And it has so much pop up that she can even go for an armored attack which is certainly not something she can do on the grounded version. Actually, the thing about the grounded version is it actually locks you into doing regular attacks or other special moves. So even if I'm mashing the grab button or the tilt attack button, it'll just make me do a full attack string like I am here. Whereas the aerial version doesn't lock you into anything, you can do literally whatever else you want, which is why it is even better on block. Because she can just cancel it into a grab and she's not forced to go into regular attacks where her regular one on the ground is on the ground. You have to wait like a really long time to see even there I tried to wait a long time and go for a grab but you're locked into doing an attack string. So even though it's really good that you can do another attack string after this which is you know really good for extending your pressure it's not very good for mix-ups whereas the aerial version you can do the aerial version into a grab and with all that smoke and dust kicked onto the air that's really hard to react to online and you can even go for an armored attack if, the opponent, if you think the opponent's gonna try and mash on your grab it's just a really, really awesome special move, and obviously she can cancel into other special moves as well if she wishes. But I'm not sure why you would want to do that. And it is handy that it actually can be cancelled into off of her tilt special. And you get the aerial version, so you get even better mix-ups off of it. So that's just an all-rounder, very good special move, good damage, good block advantage, and it starts combos. So like, what else would you want? The only thing is it takes a little bit too much time, but her regular attacks do that already. <laughs> okay, now her tilt special. Oh, and also with the aerial version, what's really good about it is it lands in a super, super good hard knockdown where she goes into her um, meter regain state so quickly. So if I just do something simple like this, and if I ended, uh, pretend I did a full long combo and I ended in that, I get to build almost three bars before the can opponent can even wake up. So it's a super awesome way to end your combos. Say if I do something simple like this. And end my combo in this. It's a really good way to end your combos because look, I build back all of my meter before the opponent has even woken up. And I build back a bunch of my support gauge. It's really, really, really amazing. It's just, that's such an awesome special move. It gets a great, excellent hard knockdown. Great for pressure, great for mix-ups, and great for combos. Best awesome special move. Okay, now her tilt special is also really, really handy. Um, it's a bit hard since you can't program what the dummy does, but it has really good tracking and it has really good um, 
oof, priority. So if someone's doing an attack, it'll basically always beat out their attack. Whether it's a dash in or regular buttons, it'll basically always hit. Um, unless they attack the like second right before she does the strike where she's not doing her dashing. But it is a really amazing special move. See, this AI is having a hard time dealing with it. Except, unless he does that. <laughs> good job, AI. Um, but it also has really good tracking and, as I mentioned before, really good anti-tracking. So if the opponent is dashing in on me, or doing some move that has kind of tracking, it kind of throws off other people's things because she jumps side to side, to side so quickly that moves can't keep up with her and she jumps jumps out of the way of them so it can be really good at actually dodging a lot of things and they end up going in the wrong direction so if I sidestep and then do this their thing will go in the wrong direction and obviously it starts combos which is really 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 handy um yeah that's about it it has really good priority so it's just a super easy cheap way of getting in and it's basically just a better version of a dash in because it'll beat an opponent's dash in it'll beat an opponent's buttons or even water wheels sometime so it's just a better approach than her dash in but obviously a dash in is free and this is not both start combos but this one actually does damage but costs meter where dash in is free and doesn't do any damage um you can actually get some pretty good damage off of it if you do something like this. Or something like... Oh wait, no, this. So you see it hits, you go into your poison, bring out your support. So that combo there. If the opponent doesn't wake up quickly, you get to build back a bunch of meter, you do a ton of damage, almost half health, which is a lot of damage for Shinobu. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a juicy combo you can get off of this special move. So it's good for starting combos, it's just a really free way of getting in, If you are, and if you aren't confident that it's going to hit the opponent, you just do it and then pop a support and then see if the port co support covers you. Especially Nezuko, who is a ridiculously amazing support with these cat scratches. Um, you're basically safe and because you move like away from your support you're not both standing right beside each other so if the opponent does do an attack it's not gonna hit the both of you it's just kind of ridiculous how awesome this special move can be and from the air it's basically the exact same because she just dashes back onto the ground but that can be handy for your you know more advanced aerial movement where if you like jump sidestep do this and you're like oh I missed I can go back onto the ground and then get a combo going just like I would have normally. And on block, it does put you into a bounce back state where she kind of is like, Oop, oh no, they blocked it. But that aerial state is actually really handy because she gets to go for her pressure like this. And it puts her into an aerial state so she can cancel right into her aerial special one, her neutral special, whatever you call it. And you can also just do whatever you want afterwards. So a lot of the time after this, or at least in my experience, a lot of people are scared of you doing this into this because, you know, her brush is really good and scary. So they just do a pushback as soon as they can and then run away. And what I found beats that really well is because she's in the air, she can use her amazing air dash and just dash after them. And it's a really safe option too. Make sure you don't do it too quickly like that or else it'll cost you meter. Let's see. If I do it too quick, it costs a bar of feet, but if I just delay it a little bit, I can do it for free. So, not only is this an aerial sidestep, so it has a bunch of invincibility, it also travels really fast, so if the opponent tries to push me back and then run away, chase them down, hit them with these, hit them with some of these, and if they're blocking, hit them with a grab, but chances are, if they've pushed back and then push away, they are going to be getting hit by that, and um, they're just, they're just going to be uh, dying, because they're going to push you away and then try and jump in the air and then because you've dashed after them you can hit them with your aerial attack and get a full combo going and yeah they're gonna be sad about it but that's that special move now her guard special is her poison pretty notorious for being like her best thing or is like what saves her toolkit from being really low damage but honestly it's really doesn't live up to the hype it's not very good so um Yes, and people really overhype the concept of the poison damage, but let me just clarify, it is not that good. It's like, 
doing an attack and then getting the damage for the attack five seconds later. So the special move itself does like 200 damage and the poison itself does like 800 damage. I've tested it compared to regular buttons. And so in total, the whole thing does about a thousand damage, which is not really that much, especially when you consider other damaging special moves in the game, like this simple special move of Nezuko's, which starts combos, does more than a thousand damage. This does almost 2,000 damage, Rengoku's Lion does like 2,000 and a bit damage, and you know, waterfalls and stuff all do ridiculous damage. So this isn't that much damage. It doesn't do that much. Even with the poison included, it's below average damage for a combo ender. It, it's not that helpful. The one thing that is useful about it, I'll say, is because this isn't actual damage, the only actual damage that the special move does is the 200 damage. So that damage will scale in your combo. So if I do a long combo like this, well, I mean, not particularly long combo, but a very scaled combo, you can see the actual attack only did 100 damage there, but because the poison damage is dot damage, also known as like damage over time, it's not actually connected to the combo, so it doesn't get scaled, so it's a fixed chunk of damage that this special move will do, which is pretty unique in this game. There's nothing that really does that. So she has an unscalable 800 damage, which it would be cool if it was more than 800 damage, because then it would actually be useful. Like if she had an unscalable 1000 or 1200, that would be really, really handy. But the point still lies that it is handy that she has a guaranteed 800 damage way to end her combos. So even if I do a full combo like this with Nezuko, So this full combo, you know, it scales a lot at the end, but all that damage, that 800 damage is included on top of that. So the combo itself did, you know, almost 3000 damage, but if you include the 800 damage, it's like 3500, which is then when you're starting to get into the, oh, that's kind of above average damage for a character in this game, and that, that's actually kind of good. And um, that's probably not including both of the... Actually, let me see. Uh, no, wait, yeah, no, I remember testing this before. So both of the poisons don't get counted into the actual combo um, tally. So if I do a combo like this, both of these chunks of 800 damage are not included into the combo counter. So as you can see, it's done about over a third of Sabito's life, which isn't 2,830. It's like almost 4,000 to get that much damage because both of those chunks of 800, one of them was a little bit less because it wasn't fully, didn't finish poisoning Sabito. But the point is she got an extra like 1,200 damage or something on the top of her combo that isn't counted into the combo tally. And that is unscaled. No matter how long or how stupid your combo was, you'll always get that damage at the end of the combo. Even if you like doing combos like this, see that chunk of damage at the end you're always gonna get that and yeah that's just kind of neat but it's nothing overpowered or great it doesn't make up for her low damage well it does a little bit but it's not amazing it's just cool that she can get 800 damage guaranteed but come on 800 damage that's like a few attacks well not for her for her it's a, like her entire attack string for, but for a lot of characters 800 damage is like two attacks See, that's, that's 800 damage for Nezuko. <laughs> so, it is really cool, but it's nothing overpowered, don't overhype it. But just do know that if you have had a long combo, ending in your poison is actually a really cool way of ending it. So it is a good ender, kind of. <laughs> and yes, I talked about that for way too long, but um, also it sucks that it's not invincible. That, that does really suck, because that means the only armored slash invincible thing she has is her tilt attack. Which, yes, is a really good tilt attack and she can get good damage from it, but just sucks that she doesn't have an armored attack. I feel like she could really use it, especially since she's a low health character. Um, I feel like she might want that. But that is all of her special moves. I'm pretty sure that is everything we have to talk about. We can talk about her ultimate activation. Um, 
I'm sure you've seen how the Academy version is, of Shinobu is notoriously actually stronger than the regular version, because the Academy Shinobu just does the dash forwards with her spear to ult activate her ultimate. But this version of Shinobu, she does the fancy little backflip into the charge forward, and it doesn't really have too good range. But, um... You know, it looks cool, and it's not that much of a difference that I'll... that I would use the Academy version over this version. Except the Her Academy is pretty cool. But, yeah. Just keep that a note. The Academy version does have a better activation, but, like, they're both okay. And it's very easy to combo into our ultimate, even from like this aerial special can combo into it super easily, guaranteed. And this can obviously cancel into it, guaranteed. And basically any of the hits in our combo will combo into it, even like the first three, I'm pretty sure, will combo into it. Oh, nope. I take that back. That will not combo into it. I'm pretty sure this does. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty average ultimate. But it does leave you pretty close afterwards, which is handy. No. We've talked about all of her regular buttons and her special moves. Now let's talk about Shinobu in general. I'll talk about her combos first, and then her resets, pressure, mix-ups special move after that. I mean, why did I say special move with that? Random. <laughs> um, combos. Yeah, so Shinobu, uh, the simplest combo you can do with her is just the fullest attack string into her standing special, into a full attack string, into her poison. Does meh damage, but it's very easy, very consistent, and sometimes you need that with a character online. And something to note about this combo is even though it does use two bars, if the opponent isn't auto quick recovering, so that means like you're there mashing the jump button during a combo, which can be pretty dangerous, and a lot of people aren't doing it, they don't do the quick... Okay, if you, I'll just show the difference. A, um, a quick recover is when the opponent does this and they kind of bounce up, but a lot of people aren't doing that online, and ending your combo in this actually leads to quite a long hard knockdown while she can build back the two bars that she used for the combo anyway. So even though it's low damage, if the opponent doesn't recover quickly, she gets the both both the bars she spent on it back quickly. Now, if you want to do any more damage with Shinobu, that's kind of when it comes into territory the way you really need to use a support. And usually with characters, I like using a cannon team or like you know, Tanjiro and Nezuko and using a team that makes sense. But with Shinobu, I think you just have to throw that out the window and use the overpowered supports like Nezuko and... Nezuko's the first one that comes to mind, but... Or even Inosuke who has the like really long slashes. You want characters with big hitbox... And big hitbox sidekick moves like her massive scratches and reasonably long activation things. So Zenitsu's wouldn't be too useful because he just does that single psh, and then that's it. Whereas Nezuko's you can do whatever timing really you want. Like you can do her early or late and she's gonna hit you with the scratches and you're gonna get a full combo super easily and she does good damage with it. And you can super easily convert. So if you do want to do slightly more advanced combos that's where you have to start thinking unfortunately. And with Shinobu, you have to really pay attention to when you get a hit. So you're hit confirming your things as soon as possible. So if I see like, oh, I got a hit, let me cancel into my poison, bring out a sidekick, dash in, and I'm in the air, and I can do something like this. And there's two main ways I like to end my combos, or maybe three main ways, depending on, you know, what the situation is. But if I have a lot of time, and I've just called out my support, I like to dash in, oops, Um, so a few hits, poison, special move, I mean, sidekick, dash in, full attack string into my aerial regular special, and I get to build back a bunch of meter from that hard knockdown, and Bob's your uncle, you've nearly gotten all of your support gauge back, so it's basically a free combo that does pretty decent damage for Shinobu. That's, you know, almost a third of Sabito's health, that's really, really powerful. And you can make the combo a little bit more damaging if I go for something like this. I do this, and I just end the combo in my Poison Strike, and that makes it do a lot more damage, and I get to build, if I do it a little bit faster...
I get the hard knockdown from this if the opponent doesn't auto quick recover. So I still get to build back a decent amount of meter. It does more damage and he's got poison on him. And so yeah, that's a more damaging way of ending your combo. If you, um, if the opponent doesn't do the quick recovery, you may as well go for that because then you still get the hard knockdown. It's just more damage. Um, but if your opponent does recover quickly, you should end in this so you have time to build back all your meter. Because she does need a lot of meter for her pressure. And another way you can end your combo, if you, you know, end up accidentally doing a full attack string, do not fret, your combo will just be a little bit shorter. I suggest you either just end in a, um, just your own aerial attack string like that, if you don't have time to do the aerial special, or if you've had like a kind of long combo and you've done something like this, and the combo's nearly over, you can still go for a poison and call your support. Oops, that was really bad, huh? Just call out your support and then just stand there yourself. Let your support take a lot of time attacking the opponent. And you get to build back a lot of meter from just standing there and watching your support do all the work. And it's probably actually one of the ways you can build the most meter. Let me see. So if I do a combo like... Do, 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 do. Yeah, I nearly build back three or four bars of meter before the opponent even wakes up. So if you, if your combo's a bit short and you don't have much time to do any extensions, just let the support do their work, do it on their own. You just stand there, chill, and build your meter. So those are the main ways I like to end my combos with Shinobu. Or, if I want guaranteed damage, sometimes I honestly just go for a grab here. And that also just makes the opponent really scared and they start doing dumb stuff. And also, some easy guaranteed damage is if you get your aerial attack. You can go into the special move and go into a grab as well, and that's a decent chunk of damage for Shinobu. Um, now that we're mentioning combos from her aerial attack, let's talk about those. So if you do end an aerial attack, which as I've talked about is very common with her because she has like the best one in the game, you have a few options. You can either just keep it super cheap and do like weird loops like this, which are free, and I said that other thing was probably the best way to build meter, but this certainly is. Oops. Okay, so like if I have no meter and I manage to land one of these, because this combo costs me literally zero meter, I get to build back a lot of it. I build back four bars just from doing that combo. Obviously, it's super cheap. And uh, yeah, but you can make it a little bit cooler if you'd like. And it does okay damage for a free combo for Shinobu. But um, yeah, if you want to make it a little bit more complex or more damaging, you can do the full attack string into this, and then do a da- oops. Sorry, I was too busy talking. Do the full aerial attack string into the special move, and then dash in, and then do the dash in twice. And you get 2,285 damage, and a lot of time to build your meter back. You still build back nearly four bars from that combo, uh, so it's really, really amazing. And... If you want to make it a little bit flashier and put in an armored attack, um, you have to make sure you don't do the full aerial attack string. You just do the first hits and then cancel into the special move and do an armored attack. And then you can do something like that. That's a little bit less damage, but it looks really damn cool putting an armored attack in the middle. And obviously with any of these combos, you can make them a little um, more damaging if you choose to. Oops. So there we go, that's a decently damaged combo for Shinobu. And obviously you also still have the option of doing stuff like this. Whoops. So that's even more damage and you still get the time to have the knockdown and build back some bar. So she gets really good combos from all situations and I mean, they're not amazing combos, and you do have to use supports in them, but as a, per as a player, myself, who doesn't really use supports in combos much, or hadn't previously, it's actually really fun being able to hit confirm, go for my poison, and bring out Nezuko. Maybe you realize how overpowered using supports is actually is in combos, because it makes your combos so cheap, and it builds back so quickly, and it honestly doesn't cost that much. Like, yes, you can't break a combo if you get hit instantly after, but even if after I do that combo, Nezuko was slightly over halfway full by the time Sabi got up. If I just, you know, jumped and backdashed like 
two times. I would have had all of my sport gauge back. So it's basically a free combo and I can I'm not at risk of getting into a full combo myself because my sidekick's basically already back. Uh yeah, combo wise, that's about it. If you do land your random special moves like this one, you can cancel into stuff like this. Either take a hard knockdown or try and do something like that. Or if you do have the reactions or you just want to go for the higher damage, you can do a combo like this. Which does really juicy damage. That's probably the best damage you can get for Shinobu. It only costs you like four bars. Or, yeah, that was four bars, I think. And it's like half of the opponent's life. That is really, really juicy stuff. And, uh, yeah. So, tilt attack into poison. Call out your support. When you call out your support during the poison, by the way, you basically just do it at either the exact same time, like a split second after, so like, poison Nezuko. And that works. Or even poison Nezuko. And that would work. Or just poison Nezuko at the same time. Or obviously Nezuko slightly before the poison. As long as they're close together, it'll work. Just make sure you don't go like poison Nezuko, or that will be too slow. When I say poison Nezuko, I was telling you when I was pressing the buttons, in case that sounded weird. But uh, yeah, this combo. I did it too late there. It's tilt special, poison special, sidekick, dash in. You can even call out your support again if you'd like to get a little bit damage at the end of the combo. Depending on who your support is, you might be able to get um, some more stuff that way. Um, actually, wait, I'm intrigued. What if I did something like this? You know, you're not often going to get much more at the end. But you can call your, combos tw your support twice in a combo if that works for your support, but not really Nezuko. Uh, combo, combo, combos. Oh, yes. If you get a tilt attack, the combo I suggest you go for is just your tilt attack into your aerial tilt attack, full combo attack string into your poison. That's a very simple, simple, cheap combo you can do that's, you know, often it happens accidentally with me, honestly, because I accidentally do an aerial tilt attack because I'm mashing tilt attack on the ground, and then I get some pretty juicy damage off of it, honestly. But obviously you also have options where you can... Oh, yeah, this is a good option. Once again, because meter building is important with her because her pressure is so expensive, you can also use this as an opportunity to build back a lot of meter. So you just make the damage a little bit less, but you get to build back basically all of your bar before the opponent wakes up just because of that one hit you got. So that now all of your pressure and combos have more meter to be used in them. So that's very, very powerful. And you can obviously just do a blend of this if you'd like. Use that hard knockdown, or just add the poison on at the end. Really, the world's your oyster, just do whatever the hell you like. Aerial tilt attack. Um, because it starts in orange combo, it's basically the same as landing a normal attack. Just see how much time you have. Yeah, I have time to go for a 6 fold thrust here, so I can take that hard knockdown. I could have even gone for the poison at the end. Yeah, all of her combos will be pretty similar depending on what you're going for. If you want to use a support, call out your support, dash in, aerial, aerial combos into a special, into maybe your poison, and yeah, that's about it. Okay, now that we have talked, oh wait, no 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 no, we we'll never finished on this channel. <laughs> if you are in boost mode, her combos can look something like this. I'm honestly just making this up on the spot. Do I get a full attack string in here? Oh no, that's not enough time. No! Honestly, using her boost, um... Her boost combo ender is not really that good, because that means you have to do a full combo string with her. And like, see- What? Even that itself did like literally nothing. Why would you ever use that? Okay, I take it back. Never used her boost combo ender. It sucks. <laughs> and if you're in surge mode, I guess just be like most characters and just mash special moves over and over again. And yeah, you'll get some decent damage off of it. You'd actually probably do poison a few times. I'll be used to, you don't get infinite sidekick meter, so meh. Just cancel your specials over and over into each other since they combo into each other. Okay, I'm finally done with combos. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. If you want to combo into your ultimate, you can easily combo into it off of literally any combo. 
Um, just as long as you do a few hits into a special move. The only thing that doesn't combo into our ultimate is our first three hits, so literally whatever else you do, you're gonna be fine. Even your aerial combo string, or your aerial combo string into aerial special, you'll be fine, you'll get your ultimate. <laughs> okay, so now with our pressure, let's get Sabuto to block. Okay, so with pressure with Shinobu, if she does a full attack string, she has enough space there to go for a dash cancel into a grab. Unfortunately, she doesn't have that space to go for it in any of the other sections of her attack string because the opponent is left too close. So she does have to do a full attack string to cancel into a grab, which makes it a little bit predictable. But that's why you have to be unpredictable. So instead of always going for a grab there, you should do a fake out where it looks like you're going to go for a dash cancel into a grab. But you just go for more attacks, and then the opponent ends up getting hit by the attacks, and you get to go for a full combo, you bring out your support, and blah 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 blah, they die. And... Yep, yeah, so that's dash cancelling into a grab, or dash cancelling into regular attacks. Obviously, she also has the option of using her advantageous special moves, six Sixfold Thrust. From this on the ground, she can go into more grounded attack strings. So basically, it's just really good for extending her pressure on the ground, but it doesn't let her do much more than link more regular attacks. Which, if that's what you want, that's great, but a lot of the time that can be a little bit limiting, because then you just keep doing the same thing over and over again. Um, but what is good about it is, depending on how close the opponent is, you can have enough room to go for a dash into a grab, but that's actually ugh, often doesn't work as you can see there. So really this special move is just for attacking the opponent a lot and keeping keeping your pressure going, keeping it your turn, and yeah, it's a lot better in the air. Speaking of being in the air, her t tilt special is often something you're not going to use in your pressure directly, so if you are attacking the opponent you're not usually just going to go into that on its own. Um, you're usually going to hit that as a block if you just do it in the neutral and the opponent just stands there and blocks it. And if that does happen, you can cancel into your aerial special, or you can actually cancel into your attacks into your aerial special. Oops. But sometimes, depending on the range, the last hit of the aerial special will whiff. Like it did there. But that can still be a really good fake out, because they expect the hit to hit, and then it doesn't, and then you get to go for a grab. It can be really scary. And off of this special move, you also have the opportunity for going in for a sidestep, which is a really good way of just freaking the opponent out, because they think you're going to go for that all the time, and you do a sidestep and maybe go into a grab. Or if they try and push you back and run away, you have the ability to sidestep and chase after them, and if they try and run away and jump away, you get to chase after them in the air and anti-air them with this, and you get a full combo for it. And if they do just try and push back and run away, or do an, an armor attack, you have lots of time to dash in, react, see that like, oh they're doing that, let me just back off, or let me dash in and then just block. It's, it's a very, very effective way of either chasing the opponent down or increasing your pressure by moving in behind them, or just making faking them out and making them feel scared. Um, now her aerial special one is really powerful because it's really advantageous on block and doesn't lock you into an attack stream. As you can see here, I'm mashing the grab button and a grab will come out instead of a regular attack stream, like your grounded version. See here, even though I am mashing a grab button, it'll get my full attack string anyways. So the aerial version is really good for pressure because you can go for an armored attack afterwards or a grab afterwards, and that leads to some amazing mix-ups you can do on the opponent. Because if you, a lot of the time, I recommend just starting with the grab because that works, you know, at least three times on an opponent. But then if they start reacting to that and they start mashing on you, because mashing will beat that grab, you can go for your armor attack, and then off of your armor attack, you get a full combo. And obviously, full combos are fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's an excellent mix-up tool, it's advantageous on block, you can even fake the opponent out with the grab by just doing some slightly delayed buttons, because you can still attack well before the opponent can, and then you'll catch them trying to press buttons with your own buttons. It's just a win-win situation. Uh, yeah, so grab, armor attack, or buttons after the aerial version is really, really powerful. The opponent basically dies just from that one mix-up, and a really good way of going into that mix-up is actually by doing her up attack string. Um, her up attack string is not really useful for anything else, so you may as well use it. So, the aerial up attack string puts her into the air, so she gets to do the aerial version. Otherwise, usually you have to, like, do stuff like this, 
and you like have to jump into the air and then do your aerial buttons, like if I do something like this. Oops. And then you do a side step in. And then do something like that, but that cost me two bars, and it, like, you know, a jump cancel, and there was a bit of a gap there. Whereas if you do her up attack string, you get to cancel it instantly, and then get some awesome mix-up pressure going. Or you can either, as we said before, go for a grab, an armor attack, or regular attacks. You can even, a good option here is because of all the dust, you have a bit of time where you can charge up your armor attack and then the opponent gets freaked out and doesn't realize that's coming. So yeah, very very good options all around with her pressure. Um, is there much else to say? Obviously, you know, because you're using overpowered supports like Nezuko and stuff for your combos, they're also going to be really amazing for your pressure. So while Nezuko's scratching, just dash in and grab. It's really overpowered, but I guess we're not judging if you're using overpowered things. <laughs> it's really ridiculous. So if you're ever using your dash and you're short, not sure if it's going to hit, you get some easy pressure. Even if you do, you know, be nice and don't just go for a grab while they're blocking it, you can always chase them down. Or if you think they're going to do a push and run away from the um, sidekick, you get to jump in the air and do your aerial attacks and chase them down. She's just a really, really, really good character at chasing the opponent down dodging projectiles with her aerial um, sidestep, um, chasing the opponent down with her sidestep, and getting awesome pressure and combos going off of any situation. But I think that is about all there is to say about Shinobu. She's a very strange character, even though she seems very simple, it actually takes quite a bit of thinking to use her effectively. You need to decide what supports you like to use and how you'll use them in your combo, depending on what supports you use. You need to think about what kind of combo enders you want to use to, oops, to build back meter at the end of your combo, or to get the poison at the end of the combo, which is a fixed chunk of de um, dot damage. Um, you need to think about your movement so that you're moving effectively and dodging the opponent's approaches, while also making your own approaches really volatile. Um, you need to make sure you're maintaining your meter, since she uses a lot of meter in her amazing pressure, and you also have to make sure you use her amazing pressure, even though it is expensive. So, that is Shinobu. She's a very interesting character, has great pressure, has great combos. I hope you enjoyed this guide for her, and I hope you enjoy playing Shinobu. If you haven't played her before, I hadn't. I actually had a real blast, so try her out. Thanks for watching this guide, and yeah, thank you. Maybe I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.